So I want to show you how to do a mail merge as if you're going to send out a letter using Word. This is 2010. It worked exactly the same way on 2013. So I've got Word here. I've got an Excel spreadsheet here that has some fictitious names and addresses, a date for an interview, a time for an interview, and a little field here, a little column that's indicating whether we should send it out. And we've got a no in here because this fictitious person has chosen not to come and told us in advance of that. So we're not going to send that out. So there's a free slot there. So what we want to do is go back to Word. What we're going to do is get it to put in the address up at the top here, the person's first name. We're going to get it to drop in the date of the interview here and the time as well. So this is going to be for a printout. We can do this as well for an email and I can show you that in a separate tutorial. So keep a lookout for that. Okay, so what we need to do is first up, we need to go to our mailings tab across the here and I'm already on it. So there's home, click on mailings and you can see it says start mail merge. I want to create a letter. So I'm going to click on start mail merge, choose letters here. You can see you can do email, messages, envelopes, labels. They'll work in a similar sort of way. So let's click here. I've chosen letters. I now need to select the recipients. So I've already got a list for that. And a good idea, just go back to Excel, is to close Excel. Sometimes it doesn't like it. If it's open, I'm going to choose save for any changes I've made there. So here I am back on Word. So you can have other sources as well. They can come from a database. It could come from another list in a Word document. But Excel is kind of one that's used quite a lot. So let's choose select recipients. So you can see they're in order here. And I'm going to use an existing list. Look, you can even get it from Outlook if you're using Outlook. So use existing list. And you'll see here on my desktop, I've got one here called address book. That's the one we were just looking at. So I'm just going to double click on that to open it up. I could just click on open. Happens to be there are three sheets on this. I have it all in sheet one. So I'm going to make sure that's selected, which it is. It's highlighted. Click on OK. So that's now selected. If I wanted to change it, you can go to Select Recipients, use existing list and choose another one, or you can change it to the Outlook contents. OK, so I'm just going to take a look at my recipient list. So you can see this little group here is your Start Mail Merge. This is where you get going. So Edit Recipient List, and you can see your list. And this may not show you all of them depending on how long that list is. Now very quickly, I could go in here and untick somebody if I didn't want to include them. And you can see it's showing me where it's coming from and all the fields are there. Last name, first name, address and so on, including send. So what you could do, quite useful, over here it says filter. And I can filter that send column. So if I go to filter, I can choose Scroll down that list, send. I can make it equal to Y, which is what's in that column, Y for yes. I could add more if I wanted to. So you could do all sorts of things like you might only want those that are on the 5th of April. So you could just do, say, dates equal to and then type in the date here. But I don't, I don't want that one. We're going to get rid of that. And maybe I shouldn't have done that. Click on none, gets rid of it. So you can see there's quite a few here that you can add. But this is this really does help. So I'm going to click on OK. And you might have seen it actually just quickly change that there. There were six people. There are now only five. You might have seen it quickly update in the background. You can always rewind about 10 or 15 seconds, I think it would be, to see what happened there. Click on OK. And we're now back on my letter. So I'd already started typing this letter, so I can actually go and drop my fields in. The way I like to do it is up at the top here. This is where my address is going to go for the person I'm sending it to. Click on this drop down, choose first name, and you can see it puts the name in there like a tag with chevrons either side indicating that it's a field. Press space so you can put the next one in, and this is how you lay it out. Last name, go down to the next line by pressing return or enter, whatever you want to call it. Then you can put the address, another space, and city. OK, obviously you could have postcode, country, all of that could go in there. 
So this bit, dear, that's the person's first name. I'm just going to choose that and put a comma there. And the interview is on and there is there are two spaces here so I just need to get it right in the right spot. That's the date and I'm just going to put in the time here as well now so let's put it in as that. So that's kind of looking good. So what you can do to see what it looks like you can preview results by clicking here. So I can do that preview results and you can see over here you've got the names are put in you could go back and adjust the spacings and you can now in this block here in the preview results you can actually use these arrows to go backwards and forwards through the database so they take you one at a time that takes you to the last one that takes you to the first one find recipient allows you to actually search so I'm going to click on Sue I'm going to just type that in and you see it's taking me to Sue Smith here click on cancel so once you've done all of that you can then you're ready to merge it all together um, by the way if you want to go back out of the preview just click on that preview results again and it takes you back to here so to finish off you want to go to finish and merge and you could edit individual documents which in the old way of doing mail merge was to actually create a new document and then you can go through and alter individual letters if you like or you can go straight to the printer so you can print documents or you can send as email messages so you could do that right from here you do need Outlook so this is kind of like if you would have gone straight to email messages here but it would have done it as a different layout so if you had created a letter you don't have to go and do it again you can come here do send email messages and then what you do is you choose here to go to you would have put in an email address and you would have put in a subject line but we're not going to do that here that's for another tutorial so as I said look out for that but you can probably work it out now what you need is a field in Excel with the email address in it so I'm going to click here I'm going to edit individual documents rather than go print documents I kind of like doing this because it's just another step just in case something goes wrong and you can do a quick check edit individual you can go OK now it's done one big document with everyone in here and you might think well Henry I know him um, and you might put in here looking forward to lunch probably not the sort of thing that you should do if you're interviewing people but hey so when you're done that all you need to do is your usual printing you can save this now as a separate document so you can save the document you've got which is the merge document so you can always come back if the database updates you can just run it again or you can keep the one that you've just created and you have that over here so you've actually got kind of like I guess an electronic in inverted commas hard copy of it so that's how you can do a mail merge using Excel and Word in 2010 and 2013